Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, I will discuss introduction to cost allocation. And this topic is covered in a typical cost accounting or sometime managerial accounting course. And it's definitely covered on the CPA as well as the CMA exam. And for more lectures, you could always go to my website, farhatlectures.com, and you could look up the any documents that I post under cost accounting course. So I'm going to go ahead and start to discuss this topic cost allocation. What is cost allocation and what's the issue with cost allocation? So let's go back and talk about something we called factory overhead. If you remember the factory overhead is one of the three cost component which is direct labor, direct material, and factory overhead. So factory overhead, the issue with factory overhead, it's not easily traceable to the product. It's not directly traceable. So when we start to talk about factory overhead, what we said, he said, okay, let's assume we have one product. And what we do is we're going to assign the overhead by establishing a rate, some, some sort of a rate. So we establish a rate. Then we allocate the overhead, the money here to the product directly. Okay. And this is what we call, call this uh, formula. It's a single plant wide overhead. So for all our overhead cost, we use that single rate and we allocate it directly to the product. What we discussed earlier here is, is a simple explanation of allocating factory overhead. In the real world, what we have, we do have factory overhead, but what's going to happen, we're going to have more than one department, more than one product, so on and so forth. So rather than establishing one rate, a plant-wide overhead rate for, for, all, for, for all the company, what we do is we're going to allocate the overhead, and we learned about this earlier, to certain departments. So we're going to allocate some overhead to this department, to this production department. Let's call it production one, and we're going to allocate other overhead to production department two. Then from this department, what we're going to do, we're going to establish a rate for production department one. So we're, we're going to do, so we allocated some money here. We're going to divide this money by some activity. And we're going to divide this money by some activity that's related to, the, to that production department. Maybe production department A uses machine hours, more machinery. It's machine intensive. And pro production in department two is more labor intensive. So what we did is for department one, it's more machine uh, machine driven department to labor driven and what, what's going to happen by doing so by having two rates rather than just simply one rate we enhance the allocation of the overhead what does that mean it means now we have a better pricing we have better pricing model now we are pricing our product better also our inventory remember our inventory is a better reflective for financial accounting purposes we have a better number also our cost of goods sold is re truly reflective of our effort. So when you enhance your overhead allocation, you're helping your pricing strategy. You know, you know how much you should price. Your inventory is accurate, and your cost of goods sold is accurate. So you had three advantages. But to make things more complicated is this: what's going to happen is some of the overhead it's going to be allocated to service department. We're going to have service department one, and maybe service department two. So some of the overhead pool and the money that's in this pool, some of it will be allocated not directly to the production department, but to other service department. And this is going to make this a little bit messier. Why? Because the service department don't touch the product. So in the production department, we're going to touch the product. So the money from here will be allocated to the product that we are selling. It will be allocated to the product that we are selling. But the service department, they don't touch the product. So what's going to happen is this. To make, to make matter worse, what's going to happen is the service department, it's going to allocate some of the cost to production one, some of the cost to production two, and sometime the service department one might allocate the product to service department two. And to kind of make little bit, li this a little bit more realistic is, for example, service department one could be the IT support. So the IT support would support production one and production two and will support service department too or this could be maybe hr or maintenance it doesn't matter some some sort of a service department that service the company and this s2 might service s1 will service p1 and service p2 so the question becomes how should we allocate those service costs 
that don't touch the product directly. Well, what we do is we have three methods. We're going to learn about three methods. I'm going to list them in this session, but we're going to work examples to illustrate how those three methods work. The first method is the direct method. And this is the simplest method. And how does it work? It allocates the overhead directly to the production department. So it goes from the S to the P directly. So we skip. There's So the service department don't allocate money to another service department. It goes right from the service department to the P department. Okay? That's the first one. Only to the production. So this is one. One of three. Two is the is the step method. And obviously the step method is a little bit more complicated, a little bit more complicated than the direct method. Again, it's one way, okay? But what's gonna happen is the S, the, the service department could allocate money to the other service department, and then the money could be allocated to the production department, okay? So what's gonna happen is it's a one way, so it's, it goes only one way. It doesn't go, no interaction in between service department, okay? And the third, method is called the reciprocal method and this is basically what it assumes the service department will allocate money to the production department but also the service department allocate money among themselves then they allocate it to the production department so this is more um, complicated from an accounting perspective but you would say this is the, it's going to be the most accurate I would say this is the least accurate or re re reflective of reality and the step method is someplace in between so those are the three methods that we're going to be working with and obviously the best way to illustrate this is to actually work with actual numbers so in the next session i will go ahead and work an example show you how those three methods work if you have any questions any comments by all by all means email me or see me in class or if you're studying for your cpa exam by all means study hard